good morning see my mic so my husband who never watches my YouTube channel said that I needed to fix my mic so that people could hear me and it's true and he said talk louder well I'm going to try to talk louder. So this may be very distracting. Ding, ding, ding. But I'm just trying to get it where... There we go. Oops. I think that it would be... I don't know. Maybe I'll try it right here. I don't know. And I'll watch this video and I'll see then. What would be the best? Okay. Here we go. So, the thing I wanted to talk about today was puppies. Ima imagine that. I want to talk about puppies. So, because something I do every day, typically every day of my life, I spend part of my day doing puppy support. People contacting me from what do we use for fleas to, and I need to make that a page on the website. Um, how to keep your puppy from dragging you down the street to my puppy is biting so I just thought I would talk about this so I will start with a little psychology okay your puppy is a dog I know that may come as news to some of you. I know many people, especially people that do not have children, want to try to conform their dog into something besides what their dog is. And I'm not saying we can't have incredibly amazing and meaningful relationships with our dogs. We can, and they go to heaven, we'll have them for eternity. That's how good our God is. But to for you to try to convince me that your dog is not a dog is to say that his DNA is not is not going to come back as a dog, and it is because he is. Therefore, there are things that dogs do because they're dogs. They lick their butt. I don't care if you have a million dollar dog; it's gonna lick its butt if its butt itches. Just saying, okay? So, this is the psychology of it. Your puppy is coming into your a new home, your new home, and the puppy is a pack animal. And the puppy has to know who is the bravest, the smartest, the strongest, and the fastest member of the pack. Because in their mind their life depends their life depends on the answer to this question so when the puppy pushes against you and asks you who's in charge and all you give the puppy is love and affection and no boundaries and no correction the puppy does not believe that you are in charge therefore the puppy believes in the pack structure that the puppy is above you, which is a very dangerous thing for a bull mastiff as an adult to think in their mind. And I see the dogs that are being put down because they're trying to boss the other pack members around, which is very normal in the dog pack, okay? Dogs bite each other, they do, they just do. And that is a very normal thing in a dog pack for dogs to bite each other and to fight with one another and to put the lower ranking pack members in their place. So if you have inadvertently given your dog, your puppy, and especially a strong-willed puppy, the false information that you are not the smartest, you're not the bravest, they are not going to trust you, nor are they going to follow you, nor should they. So they don't care about your opinion. They don't care what you want. They don't care that you love them. 
your love in the wild is not going to save them. Only your strength is going to save them. So I don't know if this helps. So this is what I find repeatedly with new puppy owners. This is so normal and people will be like, I've had a bull mastiff before and they never did this. Well, I'm sorry. This is dog behavior. If you breed a dog that is a true working guard dog, they have to have a hard enough temperament to do their job. So a Labrador or a Golden Retriever or, a, you know, all of these are herding dogs and they're watchdogs. They will bark if someone breaks in your house, but I doubt they would do anything else. A guard dog is going to do something else. Therefore, they have a different temperament and they have a different way of thinking about things in their brain. So if you want, you know, it's like everybody wants a guard dog. But if you're not willing to train this guard dog to find its proper place in the family, in the pack, you're going to have a problem, okay? So you get a new puppy and the puppy is putting its foot on you. The puppy is biting at you. All of these things are normal, people. The puppy is pushing against you to see who's in charge. So I got a text from someone that said, my puppy will not allow me to touch the top of his head. Well, touching the top of a dog's head is an act of dominance. The puppy does not believe that you are over him in the pack structure or he would allow you to touch the top of his head or her head or whatever the case may be. So even like some of my dogs, they're very strong-willed dogs. And even when I go like this over the head, they give me a little resistance. So watch that. But if you'll come under the chin, they like that. So that's, I want to be friendly. I'm not trying to dominate you. But having said that, I remember when, I think it was Goody was about six months old. And I bent to pet her. I bent over to pet her and she jumped up in my face. I mean, I put her on the ground and I let her know in no uncertain terms, don't ever challenge me. And she never did after that. She never did. They need to know. So when they ask the question, who is the strongest, and you're not giving them the, an the correct answer, you're setting them up for failure. And if they, if you inadvertently teach them to behave badly, so I had another text. I'm not making fun of anyone. I am just explaining the things that do not work, okay? So this was what this person said. They had tried everything, quote unquote, putting the puppy in a crate for time out. It, that does not work. When the puppy bit them, they tried yelping and running away. That does not work. So, and she was attesting none of the things that she had done had worked, okay? Okay. Uh, what was some other thing? Ignoring them, allowing them to bite you, put their feet on you, and you were just going to turn around and ignore them. And I saw a professional trainer doing this the other day. I'm just like... Are you people cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? This does not work with the Bull Mastiff. And so let me paint you a picture. And this is what I told this person. None of the above, there were a few other things you tried. None of, none of the above is how the mommy dog would have corrected this puppy. Do you know how the mommy dog would have corrected this puppy? She would have stood up, she would have picked him up and ragdolled him. And they don't, the mom doesn't bite through. She knows how hard she's biting, you know. She knows how hard she's biting. She's not trying to kill the puppy, but she is trying to teach the puppy a lesson. And that puppy, when she let that puppy go, would have run off, screaming and crying, hiding in the corner. And the next time, the puppy was pestering the mother and saying, who's in charge? And the mother looked at the puppy. He would say, yes, ma'am, it's you. And that is how pack structure works. The mother dog would not have put the puppy in a crate for a timeout. She would not have tolerated his behavior. She would not have cried like he hurt her. 
these these are not things that work with the bull mastiff okay so if you will just as my papa used to say we need to be smarter than the horse when we were training wild horses you needed to be smarter than the horse so i want you to think about the psychology why is the puppy doing this puppy's not trying to be mean to you this is normal puppy behavior and I can attest to you, even my puppies here, when they're little, do this. But it's not long before they don't do that because they understand there's no reason to push against me. I am the clear, unchallenged leader of this pack. So they don't need to push against me. They don't need to ask that question again. The reason puppies push against you is they need to know. Who is the leader? Who is the boss? And so, for the most part, I give people permission to just press in a little harder and correct their puppies. So I had someone say, well, when I have a switch, my dog obeys me. When I don't have a switch, they don't obey me. Well, <laughs> you need to just tuck that switch in your belt. Um, and it's practice, right? I'm not saying that well-trained dogs but the thing is you're training them every moment of every day that you're with them every time you take them out of the crate every time you put them in the crate every time you take them for a walk every time you sit down and play with them you are training them you are training them you are giving them a message of who's in charge what you are expecting what you will accept and what you won't accept. I had a lady years ago call me and say, my puppy puts its feet on the table. I said, well, get the fly sweat and give it a good whack. And she was horrified. I would never do that. I said, fine, live with your puppy's feet on the table. I said, your puppy needs corrected. And by this time, it was probably eight months old. It could get its feet on the table. I said, your puppy needs corrected. It's up to you to correct the puppy. And I see this. I've been married 40 years this summer. I have, I have seen this in America where people want to make it wrong to discipline your children. Now, I definitely do understand there's a difference between discipline and punish, and I'm all about discipline, and I'm not about punishing, okay? So we're not trying to punish these dogs. We're not trying to, they made me mad, I want an ounce of flesh. That's not what we're doing. We are disciplining them so they can learn to discipline themselves. It's called self-discipline, you know. Why don't I slap people in public when they make me mad? Because I have self-discipline, and I would hope you do too. So, that's what we're teaching our dogs, is to say no to themselves. And pretty soon it's a natural thing, and so people, when they're around me and my dogs, they're like shocked that the dogs aren't jumping on them and they go in their crates when I ask them to. They come out when I ask them to. And people are just shocked. Well, it's the same way with our children. But, uh, well, my point was that in our society, it has been, and this is not from God, this is from the enemy, uh, criminalized to discipline your children like it's wrong we should just let them grow up and be a wild flower if they want to well nobody wants to be around your wild flower or your wild dog and the scripture says if you don't discipline your son you hate them that's what the scripture says if you can't man up and discipline your children and teach them to say no to themselves you hate them and that's the truth your children are not going to be well-adjusted and function in society if they cannot say no to themselves. I know. I mean, you could teach your dog not to want to put their feet on you, but Happy is six, seven months old, and she still sometimes, if someone is loving with her, she wants to jump in their lap, right? <laughs> and, and I understand she's young, but through practice, she's learning not to jump in people's lap or put her foot on them you know so when people give her attention she, if they're sitting down she definitely wants to put that foot up there you know and get in their lap um, so I'm not saying be over overly necessarily harsh with them that's not my point and typically one one swat is all it takes but I am saying that you are 
misinformed if you think that you're going to only reward your bull mastiff and you're going to end up with a good dog. You're not. You're probably going to end up with a dog with a bullet in his head because they're intolerable and they've bit somebody in the, well, I guess they don't kill them with a bullet anymore. They do, I think, out in L.A., but uh, because the shots are so expensive, they're not going to spend that on a, I don't know, it's like 30 to 60 bucks to have something put down. They're not going to spend that on a euthanizing medication. So yeah, it's serious. Yeah, you may not want to hear what I have to say, but I'm telling you the truth. So just like I posted something the other day on Facebook on my personal page that said, <clears throat> you know, somebody who tells you the truth does not hate you. Somebody who lies to you does not love you. But if you're willing to believe a lie, you hate yourself. So I will just end that with that thought.